Good morning, everyone. We welcome you once again to Strength for Today. And our, our subject today is our confession of faith, our confession of faith. You know, it was a, a confession of faith that, by the way, that's how we got saved. We believed in our heart that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and that he died for our sins, and that God raised him from the dead. That's how we receive salvation. I know somebody may say, well, I'm saved, and I never did open my mouth and say it. Well, that that may be so, but you're still saved. In your heart, you believe it. Amen. Because the reason I say that is that if an individual is on their deathbed and they can't speak, or, or or maybe a person can't speak. It does not necessarily mean that you have to open your mouth and confess Jesus Christ. And if you don't open your mouth and confess it, it doesn't mean, well, then is that person lost? No, it doesn't mean that. And we have scripture to show that. And remember over in Acts uh, chapter 10, how Paul, was called, he went to Cornelius' house, and he was speaking to them. And, and he was just speaking. It doesn't say anything about those people confessing Jesus. But he was speaking, and as he was speaking to them, the Holy Ghost fell on them, and they was all filled with the Holy Ghost. So obviously, they had to be saved before they was filled with the Holy Ghost. So you see, uh, it, it, the scripture says confess, but there's no recording where they actually confessed Jesus, but they believed it in their heart. Uh, that's the only point that I'm trying to make is that this, that. But confession is key. Confession is important. For in Romans 10, 9 and 10, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And then it says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It's in our heart that we believe. In our, of our mouth we speak it. Did you notice it says uh, confession is made unto Confession is made unto. The key thing is believing it in your heart. Now, see, this is talking about salvation, but it could be made unto anything or whatever we believe. Amen. It's with the heart we believe. So, so understand this. People, many times people are speaking, but they're not really believing in their heart. Now, confession is key. Confession is and speaking it is key. But believing it in your heart, you got to believe it. You got to believe what you say. In other words, you have to have faith in the words that come out of your mouth. Amen. In Hebrews ten twenty three, it says, let us hold fast the profession or confession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promise. So we have to hold fast to it. You know, when you read a verse like this, the first thing that comes to my mind is hold fast. Hold fast. Well, how is it that we hold fast? Well, I believe it's confession, confession uh, uh, of what we believe. I believe it's speaking on what we believe. Did you notice it's what we believe? In 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Now, what is it that we confess here? Well, we believe that we're a new creature. We believe that we are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. See, see that, that's a child of God. You believe that you're a child of God. Well, why? how is that? Because you're based on what the Scripture says. You you believe that you're saved. Well, you 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 everything that you believe, you're basing it up on what God's word says, and it's it's true. Everything God says is the truth. So we we confess that I'm a new creature. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. See, our faith is measured by by our confession. Our faith is measured by our confession. Well, why is it that some people, some people confess? They say, I believe, and then they confess and they say it. Well, sometimes, sometimes what happens, they have their confession mixed up. They may be confessing that the Lord supplies all my needs, 
They, they may be confessing and telling you that, but someone else, they may be saying to the other individual, you know what, I don't know what I'm going to do. Things look very dark for me. So they have two confessions. One is a positive confession, and a, the other one is a negative confession. And so that's, that's being uh, wishy-washy or, or, or that's confessing and saying the wrong thing. And so many times they do not receive. But what we believe in our heart, that's what should come out of our mouth. Well, we know this, the scripture teaches that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So what we believe, what we're standing on is God's word. What, what we're trusting in is God's word. Amen. And God is faithful to his word. And so we need to look and see what God's word says concerning what we are believing. We need to get the evidence, <laughs> the proof is God's word on what we are standing for or what we are believing. Amen. I'm telling you, saints of God, God is real. God is real and his word is true. Amen. And so this confession is a confession of our heart and not of our lips only. We believe it in our hearts, and we speak it out of our lips. Now, another confession that we need to make, we need to confess that we are a spirit being. In, in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, it says, In the very God of peace, sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The coming of of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our spirit, your whole spirit, soul, and body. You see, we're three parts. We're spirit, soul, and body. Notice the order that it's given in. It's not body, soul, and spirit. No, it's spirit, soul, and body. And I believe that it's important what the way we say it. I believe it's important because the Bible says, the, God, the, the Bible, the Word of God says, spirit, soul, and body. So why should I say body, soul, and spirit? You know, most people say body, soul, and spirit. Well, why do they say that? Well, they're more conscious of their body than they are their spirit. And see, saints of God, that's, this is why we need to confess, because this is who we are. We are a spirit being. So today we're talking, we're talking, uh, our, our subject today is speaking of our confession of faith, our confession of faith. Amen. And so we're talking about confessing that we are spirit beings. We're, we're talking to see what happens when, I be, when we begin to confess that we are spirit, we are spirit beings. Then we become more aware. We become more sensitive to our spirit. And so we, we need to say that I'm a spirit being. I have a soul. I live in this body. But I'm a, I am a spirit being. Amen. We're children of God. So we speak that out of our mouth. Now, over in Philippians uh, chapter 2, verse 9 through 11, it says, Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name, which is above every name, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. God raised Jesus from the dead and gave him a name. It said, and that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Well, praise God. Praise God. We confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We confess that he is our Lord. But there's coming a day and a time that everyone, Everyone shall confess. I want to confess him Why, me, myself, I'm doing it. I'm coming to him. We have done this, and we confess him. We made him Lord of our life. But many have not. But there's coming a day and a time that every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. In 1 John 4 and 15, he says, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. So glory to God. We've done that. We confess that Jesus is the Son of God. God is living in us. Ooh, hallelujah. We have the life of God on the inside. 
My, my, my. Over in uh, John, St. John 12, 42 through 43, it says, Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. And they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. Interesting. They loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. So they failed to confess Jesus. Thanks to God, we need to be bold. We need to be bold in who we are. We need to be bold in, in confessing to others that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. And we can do that. We have opportunities to do that. People can be talking to you about certain things they're going through. And, and maybe some bad things has happened in their life. And you just simply say, well, you know what? What I do in situations like that, I just trust the Lord. I just, I just speak to the Lord, and he's my very present help in the time of trouble. He comforts me, and his peace is mine. You're confessing Jesus. You're talking about Jesus. Amen. Our last verse of Scripture is taken from 2 Corinthians 4 and 13. It says, we have in the same spirit of of faith, according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Our subject today is confessing Jesus, confessing our faith, confessing, confessing our faith, the confession of our faith. Amen. And so he says here in Second Corinthians 4 and 13, we have the same spirit of faith. I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. Well, what are we speaking? We're speaking God's word. We're speaking what God says. Amen. That's what we believe. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. 